Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the channel. And today I'm going to be recreating what I would consider an evolutionary failure in the fossil record of vehicles. And that is the Rota Buggy. It looks like this weird offspring between a Jeep and a helicopter. And I, I just think we chose the wrong path here. We, did just, we split off into the wrong branch of vehicle evolution and we had to stop. We just had to stop that one. And that is why you don't see these things flying around in the skies today. But before we dive into the ridiculousness of the Rota Buggy, there's actually some new stuff in a Trailmakers update that just happened. And there's one really, really crucial part of this update that I have to show you guys. So we got a handful of new blocks here. We've got a ship's cannon. If you have the high seas update, you can color it to look a little bit more accurate. We've got a new bell here that actually makes noise, probably painted chrome. We've got a ship's lantern, which you can color whatever light you want it to emit. We have a sconce, which gives you the power of fire. We have a bottle, probably good at containing liquid. A flask, good at containing liquid in a different shape. And then most importantly, we have a coffee mug. And the reason why this is important is because for the first time, the suspension mug has transcended into a game other than scrap mechanic. We now have suspension mug capabilities in Trail Makers, so I expect to see these on every creation in the workshop from now on. But in case you were wondering about the bell, that's what the bell sounds like. But what you would expect, and then the cannon. Oh my god, I forgot about recoil. <laughs> cannon works just like a regular large cannon, but now it's actually shaped like a ship's cannon, so it just makes your pirate ships look better. And of course, the high seas is now available on console if you're a console player. Okay, now back into this thing, this abomination of vehicular evolution. Let me tell you a little bit about what I've learned. Okay, so this perfectly illustrates why I'm viewing this through the lens of evolutionary failure. Because the Rota Buggy is essentially an evolution of the Rota Shoot here, which is exactly what those combined syllables are supposed to illustrate, which is a rotor acting as a parachute. Hence the Rota shoot. Oh, I didn't even notice. I just noticed right now this actually says Rota shoot evolution here. It's so tiny. All right, well, that tells me I'm on the right track here. So Go Go Gadget Rotor Shoot here is not a powered rotor. This is actually a free spinning rotor. As this person falls through the air, the air rises up into these blades, which then are caused to spin by the air flowing over the blades. And then as these spin, it actually catches the air, much like a wing would catch the air, slowing down the descent, much like a parachute would slow down the the descent. So, although the soldier is unable to get any lift like a helicopter provides, these propellers essentially allow the person to glide and land safely, much like a parachute allows. But the problem with this design is uh, there it wasn't very stable. Didn't have a lot of stability in where it was going. So, in order to adapt to its environment, this little guy evolved a tiny little tail to give him a little bit of directional stability, which helped, but it wasn't quite enough. So the forces of evolution turned this tiny tail into this much bigger tail with some extra appendages here. And the person now has an area to sit. It basically became a vehicle, but it still wasn't quite enough. It was still really, really hard to control, really, really dangerous. So then eventually it turned into this much, much bigger thing. And um, they also developed some evolutionary markings here to ward off predators. You see, this fools the predator into thinking that this is in fact the eye and the entire head rather than it being the smaller person in the seat here. It intimidates them and scares them off, allowing him to land safely onto the battlefield and catch the enemy by surprise or, or the predator rather but here's an actual picture of what it looked like in real life minus all of the fancy colors because you know this was the 1940s they hadn't invented colors yet now we're getting to the part i mentioned where we just started going too far down the wrong evolutionary path here because according to this article there was just a complete failure to produce a workable roto shoot and for some reason instead of just taking that hint and stopping with this concept apparently the roto shoot was sidelined to then start developing the rota buggy and the rota buggy is just the rota shoot attached to a jeep why would they expect this to work if the, they couldn't get the shoot to work in the first place? It's like you just built your proof of concept and proved that your concept was a failure. And now you're trying to build off of that? Hafner, just, just quit while you're behind. But you know what's even crazier? I did not expect this when I opened up this article, but I kept scrolling past the Rota buggy and I found this thing. The ideas kept going further and further. Nature had already said no a long time ago. Why do you keep going? 
At least when it comes to the Rota tank here, it never got beyond the initial design stage. But you know, would I really be surprised if it did? I mean, just a little while ago, I built an actual flying tank design that supposedly a prototype was built of. So this isn't really that far off. But anyway, this is the main focus of this episode and I do have these comments to thank for it. So contrary to what it looks like and what you might hear, it's not actually a flying Jeep. It's more of a gliding Jeep. This is an unpowered propeller. This thing was meant to be dragged up into the air by another aircraft and then released closer to enemy territory where it was able to more quietly glide down without a noisy engine powering the propeller. So I have never built an auto gyro style glider. I don't know if Trailmaker's physics is going to be up to that, but it's gonna be really cool to see if the auto gyro thing actually works. I'll leave a link to this article down in the description so you can actually read up on the details if you're interested. I just wanted to highlight the more entertaining bits of information that I came across for this video. All right, let's get to it. Okay, step one, build Jeep. Okay, so I think Jeep Foundation is done. It drives around, it goes, it does what Jeeps do. Uh, and it even, it even flips over if you go too fast and turn. Now for the somewhat more complicated parts, I'm gonna add the whole tail onto this thing. I'm gonna do the rotor thing last because that's definitely the most complicated part. But let's see if I can get this tail to actually look how it's supposed to, or at least close enough for my standards. Okay, so you can see by the difference in color, this is what I've added so far. This is the tail, and I, I'm i gonna try not adding any control surfaces to this, because I tried to look into how auto gyros work as far as their controls go, because a lot of them don't have ailerons or elevators and stuff that control their pitch and roll, as far as I can see. Now, I have no idea if I'm completely off base here, but from what I could gather, this they seem to be able to control the pitch and roll of an auto gyro just by tilting the propeller. Not like a helicopter that has that swashplate mechanism that actually tilts the blades as they're going around in a circle. Auto gyros seem to actually tilt the entire propeller as a whole. So I'm gonna see if that can work here. If not, the simplest uh, workaround is just gonna be to provide uh, some pitch and roll controls into the tail. Okay, so now the complex part that I genuinely have no idea if trail makers can handle this. I gotta attach a free spinning rotor to this thing. I'm gonna attach a free spinning rotor to this thing that essentially has wings. Okay, here we go. Rotor is attached. As you can see, I can control the rotor in its various directions. No idea if that's gonna help me at all. No idea if I'm even going to be able to get up in the air. Let's start driving and see if this thing starts spin. Okay, you know, this is... it. It's supposed to start spinning, but I'm very parallel to my direction of movement, so it sh there's really no air moving upwards through the rotor. Let's see what happens when I get off of here. This is not a promising start. You know what, maybe, maybe we just need to fall from a higher height. So uh, once I fall off here, we're just gonna gracefully glide down to the ground, just like you would expect out of any Rota buggy. Here we go. Oh, and there goes part of my tail. That shouldn't be an issue. All right, do I not have the, this is not working. <laughs> this is not working. I'm just nose diving. All right, I'm gonna put some more weight in the tail. Because I feel like I'm very, very front-heavy for uh, where my lift is. Oh boy, we're not supposed to be up to down like that. Alright, come on. Come on, catch the wind! Catch the wind! Catch the wind! Okay, we're not catching the wind at all. I am not worried at all because I expected that this was not going to be the optimal design. I think what I really need to do is angle these blades. Because right now these blades... They're not angled at all. Alright, there we go. Now we can see that the blades are actually angled with the wind now, so... I'm hoping that's gonna make a difference. Let's see what happens. Come on. Oh, <gasps> it's spinning. Okay, it's not, sp okay, now I'm just falling. Okay, that didn't work out very well either. <laughs> I am not having a lot of confidence in the whole auto gyro system for trail makers right now. You know, maybe, let me try some bigger wings. Let me just see if the wing size makes any difference at all. All right, what if I just drive off the carrier? Am I gonna see anything happening? Oh, hold on. That actually seemed to be doing something. Oh, I just need to get the tail out of the way. Okay, that time nothing really happened. Let me try, let's try it from a higher height. Man, I really need like a dedicated glider launch pad in this map to just launch gliders off of. Okay, here we go. Come on, level out. Oh, oh it just can't. 
it just can't level out. It seems like if it was gonna be horizontal, it would work, but the tail is actually ruining everything. All right, so yeah, out of curiosity, I'm just gonna replace this part of the tail with uh, wedge blocks. That way it's gonna have much less resistance as we fall, being much less likely to keep our tail up in the air. Pitch up. <gasps> Fly! Oh, it's trying. Oh, and it hit itself. Okay, this is just a nightmare. This is an absolute nightmare. See, like when I drive off of something that is flat like this, it actually performs pretty well. Like, look at this. It actually almost looks like it's gonna start working. But I, I don't have any area like that to drive off of from a higher altitude. You know what? Maybe a catapult can do the job. Let's see what happens. Oh no, that's not a good idea. And you think these catwalks would be a good solution, but this lip on the edge of the catwalk just ruins everything. It, it takes my tail off. But hey, wait, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, no, we, whoa, that's fancy. Oh my goodness, that was, that was stunts. Um, Pull up, trying to pull up, not working. All right, this time didn't work that well. I can't even tell if I'm like onto something right now or if this is just a non-starter in Trail Makers. Like the repeller spins, but it really doesn't seem to be having a huge effect on our fall velocity. Oh no! <laughs> I decided I was gonna put four blades on it instead of just the two for maybe some more lifting power. But uh, I should have learned my lesson from the uh, the tree flugel. It doesn't, the, the rotors do not like having four blades attached to them. Does not compute. Okay, I thought I had the brilliant idea to search the workshop for a rotor buggy to see if someone has built one and see if they have succeeded. But this is not promising. There's no matching items for rotor buggy. But the main issue that I'm running into is the auto gyro system. So let's see if I type in auto gyro. Whoop, I didn't mean to do all caps. Okay, that does not look like an auto gyro. This has potential, actually. So by ultimatium, let's try that one. And then we got Creeper Plays Auto Gyro 2.0 here. And this doesn't look like it has works on the same principles. All right, so let's see. Are these powered at all? Oh, this is, these are not supposed to be powered. Okay. Oh, okay, no, no, yeah, this uh, this does not seem to work at all. E well, I'm actually surprised that the helicopter blades are spinning on their own, but yeah, this is not, this is not working very well. This one does give me the ability to manually power the uh, main props there, but I'm supposed to turn them, all right, they're off now. They're supposed to automatically spin and provide lift. And they are not spinning at all. And yeah, it, it that does not seem to be working the way it's both. Oh, now they're starting to spin. Okay, and now we're getting out of control. All right, so this one, that is not a controllable auto gyro, at least not for me. Maybe there's a way to control it that I'm not aware of. All right, so this one, oh, this is unpowered. This helicopter engine's actually unpowered by Creeper Plays here. All right, um, the auto gyro part is not happening, but there's like, there's so many other controls. What is P and H? Do? Wait, what? Oh, it gives it pitch. So it is spinning automatically, but I feel like I'm getting all of my lift from my propellers. Like it's not making a difference. The more I angle the propeller into the wind, the more it spins, which makes a lot of sense. But if I stop using those... Oh, that's actually... That is kind of working better. Man, I just wish this wall wasn't here. This would be a perfect place to launch off of, but there's a wall in the way. Can I just squeeze right by here? No, okay. Well, hey, actually, that kind of worked. All right, here we go. All right, can I maintain control? Oh, look at that. That actually does seem to be working. So that is interesting. That is kind of promising. All right, please let me... Oh, no, I, I cannot pull off the same thing as the other one. Ooh, what about here? This looks like a good launch spot. Okay, here we go. Go! Oh. Oh. Oh, are we doing it? We're, we're still, we're falling at 50 miles per hour. That's not good. But this is almost kind of working as intended. It's probably slowing me down. How fast do you think I would fall if I didn't have that? Okay, now no wings. Do we fall faster than 50 or 60? Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, I mean, well now we're also angling down. Yeah, okay, so the wings, they do make a difference. The propeller is doing a job. All right, I just want to fly down to the aircraft carrier. I just want to hit it. I want to hit the aircraft carrier. I don't even care if I take damage. I just want to be able to get there. All right, here we go. 
I think I added some more wings than what I had before on this one. Okay, I... Hmm, interesting. Okay, can I roll? Are my roll controls working? They're a little bit more subtle than I was hoping. We're going backwards now. We're actually going backwards. This is not good. Okay, we're turning around. Okay, we're we're at thir we're in the thirties though. Adding some more wings really really helped. I'm gonna experiment with moving the rotor back, changing the center of lift to a little bit behind the seat because I was I was leaning back a little bit. So maybe if the center of lift is back more, it'll be better. Okay, here we go. Center of lift is back more. Let's see what happens. Come on. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, it's working. Oh, it's working. Oh no, tilt forward, tilt forward. Yes. Yes. No way. No way. Come on. All right. Back, 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 back. Eh. Oh, we lost the tail. You know what? We don't need the tail anymore. We do not need the tail anymore. We are on the ground. I just, I just accomplished the goal. I glided over to the aircraft carrier from that wall, from way up on that rock up there, with a completely unpowered propeller. The Rota buggy lives. I gotta try that one more time. I wanna play around with the controlling of this thing. Because remember, all of my controls right now are this, that, and that. And I really didn't test out to see if it works, especially the turning left and right. So let's see what happens. All right, we're falling. The auto gyro is now auto gyroiding. <laughs> All right, now let's see if I turn to the left. Uh oh, turn to the right, turn to the right. Pitch right, pitch right. It's working, it's very slow, but it worked. And now I can level out and... Ugh. Still a little bit of a rough landing. We don't, we don't maintain a lot of forward momentum. That's the big flaw with this thing right now is there is not a lot of forward momentum maintained. But even though it may not work great, that actually worked. I mean, I don't know what that line is between gliding and falling, but I feel like we were treading enough within the gray area to be able to pass for gliding there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this recreation of the Rota buggy. Leave some more suggestions for other stuff you'd like to see me try to recreate. If you enjoyed this, you'll probably enjoy the rest of the series too that you can find on the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.